I'm Michelle Vitulli. I'm Ryan Rag. And our project was to fix the tin roofs, the holes in the tin roofs. Um, VAR Plus is a community in Western Cape region. It's about 45 minutes to an hour out from Cape Town. The Tippy Toe Foundation is a public benefit organization founded by Tamron Simpson. And their mission is to bring about positive change to the community by minimizing the effects of gangsterism, <coughs> drug use, physical abuse, unemployment, and teen pregnancy. They hope that a positive, a positive change can be accomplished by simply one person helping out another. Our project was to fix the holes in the tin roofs. There's about 20 houses that have holes in their roofs which can lead to severe um, health issues with the rain coming in and also the sand gets in the houses causing which can get into their lungs and causing poor lung conditions. Well, now so continue on that. The harsh weather conditions like the rain and the wind can bring in the sand which can be uncomfortable for the living conditions of these families which can cause illness and even death. Okay, so we've researched two different projects that we believe can be successful in fixing these damaged roofs. Um, the first project utilizes aluminum sheet metal. The metal has many benefits, including that it's very flexible, it's relatively expensive, inexpensive when compared to other building materials. Um, it can be easily manipulated and shaped to fit all different types of roofing, so if there's a, like a roof that has jagged edges or a little bit of a curvature to it, we can bend the metal to fit that shape. So instead of, we can, we can use this metal in, on other roofs that are not just flat and we wouldn't just lay it right down on, so we can shape it to fit any type of roofing. Um, there's, there's two ways that we can apply this sheet metal. First, we can use aluminum adhesive tape which is very strong and can bind the metals to the existing roof. The other option and the, m the one that will really help us in the long term is to weld the metals together. It will create a bond that is nearly unbreakable with the existing roof material. And this is a relatively, relatively practical option and solution that will help the repair last well into the future. Um, the supplies that we'll need for this project the first one is heavy-duty metal sheet cutters, which is made by the company called <coughs> Naco. Um, these will help us. These are essential to cut the aluminum sheet metal to fit the dimensions that we measure the holes to be. Um, the most important supply that we need with this project is obviously the aluminum sheet metal. Um, we'll need the supply to be purchased and readily available upon our arrival. In addition, we need all ne all necessary welding materials and aluminum adhesive tape to bind the new sheets of metal to the existing roof. Um, this is our budget we've estimated based on American prices of these materials and we've uh, converted them into the exchange rate for the RAND. Um, the metal cutters, we only need one of those and they cost approximately $50 which is about 390 RAND. Um, the aluminum sheet pieces of sheet metal that we researched were 3 feet by 3 feet and we figured that we would need 10 of those and that comes out to be around two hundred dollars or a little over fifteen hundred grand. Um, the aluminum adhesive tape, we would probably need five rolls of that and those are relatively cheap so they'd come up to twenty dollars total just over hundred and fifty rand. And the welding materials I put if needed at the end because Tamarin's brother, the woman who uh, is in charge of the community project, the Tippy Toes Foundation down there, her brother is a welder and we may not even need the materials because he may have them already but if we do those materials come up to a total of about $50. And the total project cost for this project is $320, approximately 2,500 Rand. Um, the second solution that we came up with is a uh, composite roll on roofing project. Um, this project is another one which we believe could be very successful. The roll on roofing is made out of either 
asphalt or fiberglass base material and is very sturdy and weather resistant. Um, it can be applied, applied to fat, flat roofs and roofs that have very little slope. Um, before we apply the roll on the roofing, we'll place a layer of uh, thin roof liner over the damaged area. This is a self-adhesive material, which means that it will stick to anything. We will not need to apply any adhesive to it. Um, and this prevents leakage and water damage. And then over that, we'll place this composite material, which we can just roll out and cut. And then uh, to apply that onto the roof, we need to uh, uh, apply something called plastic roofing cement onto the existing roof. And that is very cheap and simple to apply. You just, it comes in like gallon containers, and you just take it and you apply it right onto the, the roof where you need to stick the composite material, and you place the uh, the roll of roofing right over it, and it sticks right on. The this is another alternative, and it can be in addition to the composite um, project. It's called spray polyurethane foam. It uh it first goes on as a liquid spray. You can spray it into all affected areas that include like small holes, little uh, cracks. And once you spray it on, it expands and hardens and goes and fills whatever cracks that um, exist after our initial repair. So whatever we missed in the initial project, if we spray this on, it will fill in all the holes that we missed. And that will prevent leaking. And this is a long-term solution. This lasts a very long time. The only problem with this, and this may be a reason why we can't do it, is this is very expensive and may not be practical for our uh, trip, but that depends on our budget and how much money we've left over. Um, so the supplies needed for this are the composite roll roofing, um, the protective, protect, protective roof lining. These all come in rolls, and I believe both of them were 100 feet by 36 inches, so it would uh, provide us with plenty of, uh, plenty of materials, just one roll for the whole project. Um, the plastic roof cement, we would need to um, bind the composite to the roof. And a trowel is a small metal, flat metal tool that we would need to uh, apply the, the uh, plastic metal, um, the plastic, uh, sorry, the plastic, um, what's that called? Uh, cement to uh, the roof. And I put polyurethane spray. If we find out that the budget allows us to uh, go ahead with that in our projects, that would be something else that um, we would need purchased. Um, and this is the budget we came up with this project. Um, one roll of composite roll roofing, and like I said, they're both about 36 inches by 100 feet, so we, we would only need one roll of each. Um, we found the prices to come anywhere in between $65 and $90, which is $570 grand. Um, the roof lining for one roll, it depends on the brand for the price. Um, came anywhere between 100 and 200 dollars, so 750 and 1500 grand. Um, the plastic roof cement, we would need two gallons of that, based on the research that we did that showed how much you would need for each um, uh, square foot of roofing, and that came out to 15 dollars. That's relatively cheap, and only 115 grand. And the trowel, just that small tool, 10 dollars. Uh, the polyurethane spray, like I was talking about, is the cheapest price we found for that was $250 for a canister, and one canister would be plenty for every uh, repair that we would need, and that comes out to almost 2,000 rand. And the total with with the polyurethane included is uh, anywhere between 450 and 550 dollars, which is uh, as you can see 3,500 to over 4,000 rand, and without the polyurethane, much cheaper, 200 to 300 dollars, 1550 to 2,300 rand. When used alone, the plastic roof and cement will be able to patch up any holes. Unfortunately, it won't last as long as our other solutions. So even though it is the cheapest, it won't last as long as the polyurethane spray foam or the aluminum sheet metal. Those who will be helping us with this project are our classmates along with any other others within the community. Also Tamron and her foundation as well as her brother, who is an experienced welder, who, who will really help us out a lot if he, with his experience. Um, houses that require more time, obviously, will leave us with the risk of not finishing the project as long, like our 
within our time frame that we're there. However, if so, then the community can continue with the project on their own and we can help them, teach them the ways that they can finish the project on their own. Minor repairs obviously take less time, which will be more efficient and we'll be able to fill more of them. Okay, so the past experience that, that I've talked to people about regarding projects like this, I, uh, I've talked to some of my friends about projects similar to this. Not, they're not um, quite tin roof projects, but they have to do with repairing homes and um, building, building different types of structures. Um, I've talked to friends that went to Nicaragua and built classrooms and uh, more something that is more relevant to our project. Um, one of my friends, my roommate, actually went to uh, North Carolina over spring break for Habitat for Humanity and built homes down there. And he told us a lot of things about what we'll, what um, changes to our goals we'll need to make and how we adapt to different situations that may occur. And the successes that they had and the main advice they would give us to succeed were to alter our goals and our project plans based on changes that happen once we get down there. So like I put in the last point there, assess and complete the most practical projects. If we get down there, we think that one of our solutions may not work or we may not have time to finish it, we might just want to scrap it and do something else that might benefit the community more. And then we can talk to the, the residents down there and see what, what they find more important, whether they would want us to spend all the time on a major project or a major repair, or be more efficient fix, fixing minor holes that take less time, but we can get a lot more done. So that was the main thing that I got out of uh, talking to people about their past experiences. Um, so for the project's approval, there's no government restrictions against this type of project in South Africa. This is a community of squatters, and in South Africa, any, per any group of people who uh, makes their permanent residence on public land, the government can't impose on that land and they can't kick them out. So there'll be no government restrictions and the only restrictions that we could have possibly had were with the community and they haven't given us any restrictions for any of our projects that we're going to complete. The challenges that we'll face when conducting this project, the, mo the biggest challenge that we found is the fact that we are not physically able to go down there and assess the problems ourselves. So. With that, we won't really be able to know how much of everything that we'll need. And going off of that, um, the pricing, things price, the price varies very much so in America than down there. So with the current exchange rate, it could change at any moment. Right now it's in our favor, but when we go down there, it might not be. So the budgets that we have come up with now could possibly change depending on when we go down there. The most efficient way to measure our, our, our success would be to compare the number of houses that we were able to repair with the number of houses that needed to be repaired. So, um, and the overall happiness of the residents, whether they think that our work better their living conditions or not is up to them. So, by lending a helping hand, we are setting an example to the community, proving that something so simple as helping out another person can cause such a positive change. The success of our project really is determined by the number of families that we have made better living conditions for. If we only get the chance to fix one house, that house is now a better, more healthy living condition for one family. By then, our project will be a success. Thank you. Nice. So, uh, questions and answers. Questions. Erin. I have one question. Yep. Okay. Um, how many roofs do you plan on um, helping fix? Okay, so according to Tamron, the, like I said, the woman who's running our projects and is in charge of the community, um, she tells us there's anywhere between 15 and 20 repairs made, but she hasn't told us how many of those are significant. She said very few are, mm -hmm. so we're assuming maybe two or three will be significant repairs that will need to be done and the majority will not be so we're thinking anywhere between like 12 to 16 minor repairs than whatever the rest major so how many how, how long do you think uh, on average it would take you to fix minor repairs two to three hours. for each each house yeah, or that's each what we, that's what we estimated but like we said depending in our, on the severity how our, uh, differ. yeah but like we said in our presentation 
we're not going to really know that until we get down there and see. That was one of our challenges. We're not going to really know how long it's yeah. going to take until we get down there and see what. Do. So how do you decide whose house gets fixed first? I guess it'll depend on the most severe ones that need it the most. I guess we'll go down and then from there we'll go down. I guess the ranking order of the most minor ones will be fixed to last. So that way the most se severe holes will be fixed and more better results will be made. Um, so I know you're, you've been working with Tamarin, um, but is there a community leader that represents the community that you will be working with to kind of decide where the priorities should be? Um, there is a community leader. I'm not sure what his name is. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, I think he's a carpenter or, okay, he's not a carpenter. <laughs> but there is a community leader that we'll be working with when we get down there and he will, that was another thing that I, uh, based on, uh, regarding the last question you just said is, what house are we going to fix first? We felt like that, that should come from him, what he thinks is the most important needs for the community. Yeah. So we would go to him and uh, he'll give us all the, or at least any advice that he can give us, we'll, we'll take into the most consideration out of any, so. Um, when you guys are going to be there, what season will it be? I mean, is, it, is there a rainy season where the issues get worse? Is there a dry season? Um, if you're going to be using tin or the metal roofs during the hot season, does it get, I mean, is tin the best material you think to use if you're living in a tin house, you know, with the heat radiate, or what season will you be down there in? Well, when we're traveling down there, it'll be winter, and that's another part of our challenge is that the weather differs every day. Like, it, it's been so nice here and then so cold, so I feel like something like that would have to play day by day. The foam and, um, like, the fiber, cement, don't heat up, but also if it's raining, it might be hard for that to lay down smoothly. So that is a challenge that we're going to have to face. And I guess one of those things that when we go down there and we assess like the weather for that time, and it gets closer to when we will be there, then we can make an executive decision what material. And one thing we're fortunate about is it's just the beginning of winter, so the temperatures are still within a reasonable range to do construction. So all these materials that I put in the report um, you can't apply them in very cold weather, like below 50 degrees, but not all of them, but some of them, like the fiber, uh, not the fiber, the cement plastic that I was talking about, the adhesive. Um, so the average temper, temperature is in the mid, mid 60s, I believe, and uh, that should benefit us a lot because if we were going a few months later, the, these projects would have been a lot more difficult to complete based on the solutions that we came up with. Well, so do, is there other questions that came up? I just have a question about if you've taken into consideration any of like the health risks of using the materials that you're using, if there's any health risks with the polyurethane, or, I mean, I don't know if there is, but it's something you might have researched or may have not. I mean, just throwing it out there. Do you, do you mean like the, the chemical the individual, risks? Or yeah, the chemical like, risks of okay. the individuals living in there. If yeah. it is a risk at all, maybe it's not, but I just have something if you sort of thought to research that. No. Yeah, when I was researching the polyurethane, which I'm just thinking about all the materials we had in there, that was the only thing that was something that you weren't supposed to be around for a little while, but it was within a reasonable amount of time. So within like less than three hours. Once it, it needs time to, to uh, expand and harden. And when, I th when it's in that process, I believe, you're not supposed to get very close to it because it's toxic. And it, it, it emits some chemicals, but yeah. that's within a res reasonable amount of time. So, I mean, if, if the if the resident is willing to leave their house to have that done, which I'm I'm assuming they would be, that that's good. Other question, Kristen? Do you have any? Yeah. Um, of the solutions, what do you think? Which one's going to last the longest? I'll start. You want me to? Um, well. I personally think that the one that will last the longest would be if we are able to apply pieces of the aluminum sheets, just because we'll be able to put them onto the roof and then use something like that adhesive tape or the foam to cover around the edges so there is no water getting in or no cracks that we have missed. And if it be welded on, which would be the best solution, then <coughs> it's an unbreakable bond that will last for a really long time. And. Uh like, like Michelle said, the welding, the welding in a perfect world, the welding in 
combination with the sheet metal would be our best plan. But when we get down there, we're going to have to figure out whether these two metals can be welded. I'm, I, from what I've seen, almost any two metals can be welded together. But uh, based on the shapes of these holes and whatever other facts we need to consider, maybe that's not possible. But if any, any repair that is possible, that is our best solution because that is a very strong bond that would be very long term. His Tamron's brother, is he volunteering that day or you don't? She's, she's told us that he'll be helping us with our projects and he's a welder, so. Questions from the peanut gallery, anyone else? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, good one. Um, where are they? Um, do you guys have any statistics? You made um, the statement that the, the whole, because of the holes in the roof, it causes illnesses and death. Do you know how many people have died in this community because of that? Um, not exactly in the community, but I do know that with the holes in the roofs, there, there's mold and mildew that can form, which is a very toxic chemical if inhaled. And with the issue of the sand getting in, that also can be breathed in, which causes like long, in your lungs to be cloudy and which isn't unhealthy as well. Just as a suggestion, it might be worth it to get, if you can, I know that you know collecting data sometimes is difficult, but as a way of measuring your success to see if you know health issues go down after you implement this project, that might be a way to measure you know an outcome to see if it was successful or not. Um, my other question is, so in your budget, and it kind of goes off what Kristen was saying, are you going to budget paying for the local? You said you're going to hire carpenters. Is that something that you budgeted for, <coughs> for paying for their labor? Uh, there's carpenters within the community that have volunteered their time to help us. And I'm not sure the exact number of carpenters, but I know there's men in the community that are very experienced carpenters, and they'll obviously be much more of an asset than us as students with very little experience will be. So, And they volunteered, so we didn't need to budget for that. Same with Tamron's brother. Um, okay, I have two more. Um, so in your budget with your numbers, are those American prices or are those South African prices? Um, like Michelle said, that was one of the biggest challenges. Mm -hmm. So I took the prices of all those materials in what they're priced in America mm -hmm. and just converted that based on the current exchange rate. Mm -hmm. But that was, like we said, in the challenges part, it's only, it is very difficult for us to find out how, how those materials are priced in South Africa. Mm -hmm. We assume they'll be less, but maybe that's a material that isn't made down there, so maybe uh, it, was, it was very hard to those prices weren't really available looking in foreign, um, in terms of foreign countries. So. And also you said that um, you were looking at spray-on polyurethane. Did you look at the paint-on polyurethane? Because that might be cheaper than the 250 price that you budgeted. There's like, you know, it comes in like a paint can and you actually like paint on the polyurethane. Did you find that at all or just the spray stuff? I, I, did, I did see that and it was cheaper, but I, I think that the, uh, the foam would be better because it actually expands and fits into all the holes that you missed. So even the holes that we can't see, say if there's like one up, if there's like a little crack and there's like a bigger hole up top, like on uh, the surface of the roof where we missed, I really feel like the foam would be a better option because it'll expand and then harden and then we really, the roof be sealed and no water will get in. Um, okay, and I just have one last question. Um, you said in your measurement that one of your, the way you're going to measure your success is by the happiness of the um, community members. How do you measure happiness? Well, um, we plan to keep in contact with Tamron even after, the, even after we leave um, South Africa. And the whole way that we knew about this pro problem is that she went in there and she asked them, what is more most important to them as a community and what do they feel that needs to be fixed and fixing the roofs was one of their top priorities so after we leave talking to them she can go in hopefully and ask them how they feel that we did and we can use their feedback to judge like that that was our most for us that was our most important measure of success more than anything because if we leave and they're disappointed with how little we got done or what we did then we failed. So. Any other questions? Nice, very nice job. Mm -hmm.